And that's why, I mean, if you look at how we might discuss the issues of evolution with um, perhaps, say, younger devotees or even with the public, you know, and do we actually say, you know, do we have to say evolution is rubbish? Do we have to even bring it up? No, because as Prabhupada would do, he would say, um, you know, does it really matter? You know, does that point of where we come from, where our bodies come from matter? No, the real thing is that I'm not this body. I'm spirit soul. That's the thing we should be focusing on. And and do we have a connection with the rest of nature? Well, we actually we have a far deeper, more intimate connection with nature than the common descent of our DNA. We actually go a lot further than that. We're willing to say, actually, I have a connection with nature because I've been there. I've been in that body. I've been a dumb beetle. I've been a fish swimming around. I tried it as a bird. You know, I've done them all, you know. And through the evolutionary process of consciousness, I have come to the platform of being a human being where I have this extra facility of understanding my situation and understanding, uh, you know, establishing a relationship with Krishna. So that is one way of, in, in one sense, that sounds like a bit of a, uh, you know, dodging the issue. And But it's certainly what it is doing is establishing the, um, uh, the priority for us as humans. Okay. You know, I can, you know, I, I can That's go back and... Just, just to finish this book, I can go back in my genealogy, you know. I, I, I can trace my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. It gets a little blurry after that. Do I need to know much further back than that? No. <laughs> Not really. You know, I think, you know, those more recent circumstances, you know, at least even tell me who I am as a human being, a conditioned human being. But even more important, they tell me nothing about who I am as a spirit soul. That's beautiful. So it's fascinating. If we are, if if we if our essential identity is not that we are not the body, then getting into a huge conflict about where the body came from, that itself becomes inconsequential. And in one sense, uh, to understand who we are, it's not so much going into our genealogy, but going into our spirituality. Yeah. So, so it's a uh, it's now. What if I understand right, a modern evolutionary synthesis would say that there is no room for our spirituality itself. But what you have discussed till now through various aspects like remote viewing and so th through how we experience life and also through what the mechanisms of evolution can actually do, what you we have established is that there is not just room for consciousness, but we could even say that there is necessity for consciousness. Well, that's right. And that's very good. That's the perhaps the, uh, the next level of discussion that we might enter. You know, I think the first one is just as we said, you know, we don't have to deal with it. Let's deal with the big issues of who we are, uh, you know, as spiritual beings. This next one would be, you know, this assumption that uh, evolutionary theory is atheistic. I could ask, where did you get that idea from? What tells you what? What about it? What is it about evolutionary theory that necessitates it being atheistic? I, I mean, some devotees I think are quite comfortable with the idea that there is kind of a theistic evolution, or a theistic Darwinism, if you like. You know that, you know maybe God creates evolutionary theory, you know, or an evolutionary process, and we are products of that, and. Um, I can't, that doesn't sit with me personally, but I respect those devotees who might feel like that and, and that have come to that sort of conclusion. I would deal with it in the converse. I would say to someone, why do you think that evolutionary theory is, has to be atheistic? And there's no reason why it has to be atheistic, but people might say, well, because it removes the need. I don't need to have a God in order to explain where life comes from. And then that's when I would actually challenge, really? You have no more need? You haven't got any information in there. 
<laughs> you've not you haven't got a process of information and this was one of the kind of mahavakyas i think of the early bi that how can high information systems come from low information processes and random mutations natural selection gradualism these are very very low information processes tiny information process how does high information content come from that and it's not over a long period of time it's not you know so there is a need for information and we have a source of information now most christians will immediately go to god god did it but that's not very scientific and that seems to be bringing in something that you know is a speculation or at least a belief you know of a uh, this supreme being what i find is more attractive for in discussions is bring in consciousness because consciousness we know exists hmm. it's not some new esoteric thing that's why i don't even mention the soul actually in, in preaching I, i tend not to because they think well what's the soul because they've separated the concept of soul from their own consciousness you know but if we say consciousness is is a real thing and you know it because you are a conscious being hmm. then let's and consciousness is a source of information well maybe consciousness is part of the process and because consciousness is outside of time it actually can play a part in the development of the universe and of life in it from its very beginning that is the unique picture that we have of non temporal consciousness it changes the picture the philosophical theological picture entirely 